So I should have done that. Should have done that earlier. So um, the last couple lessons, you guys learned how to rename a fraction. So if I was to write down two thirds, most of you could rename it as also four over six, or you could rename it as six over nine. Okay, those are all equivalent fractions, and we just renamed two thirds to four six and to six ninths. That's that's what a lot of the last lesson was about. But again, um, this lesson, we're starting to add fractions that do not have the same denominator. And let me say again, I don't remember, who was it? Was there anybody absent today? Okay, no, all right. So um, if you don't have the same denominator, you can't add them. So we need to rename these before we can add them. So I'm looking at the denominators. I'm looking at three and I'm looking at two. Raise your hand if you can tell me what a common, what would be their common denominator. So about a third of the class, okay. So you need a number that both three will go into evenly and a number that two would go into evenly. Miss Noble, what do you think? Six. Six. Three goes into six evenly, and two goes into six evenly. And watch what I do here, okay? So I'm gonna look at three first. Three goes into six how many times? Two. Two times one is? Two. Two, two goes into six how many times? Three times. Three times one is? That's how you rename these. And now we have equivalent fractions. We've renamed them. One third, we've renamed it to two sixths. And one half, we've renamed it to three sixths. And what did we talk about just a couple minutes ago? If the denominator is the same, all you have to do is add up the numerator. What's three plus two? Five. Five. So the answer is five sixths. One third plus one half equals five sixths. So there's a few steps in doing this. Let's do another one. Okay. Um, and whoops. <laughs> I wonder if I no. So um, quietly, since I started the recording already and I should have had you guys do this, um, if you need some scratch paper or line paper, one person from each group gets some quietly. So I'm gonna put up another problem here. How about, um, how about one half plus two fifths, okay? So let me ask somebody here. Uh, Mr. Ward, what's the common denominator you could use? What number would two go into and five would go into evenly? Well, two doesn't go into five evenly. No, okay. Ms. Ugisa, what's... Ms. Ugisa, what's a number that two and five could go into evenly? Oh. 10. So I'm going to rewrite these here. I'm gonna just put it vertically, one half and two fifths. I'm adding those together. And I'm going to rename them. That's what we did in, the, in seven dash two. We renamed these fractions. So I'm gonna put 10. That's the common denominator we're using. Watch what I do. Okay. Uh, Mr. Delgado, five goes into 10 how many times? And two times two is? Mr. Button, two goes into 10 how many times? And five times one is? I've renamed them. Now they have the same denominator. Now all I have to do, Mr. Hinkle, is add the numerator. So what's the answer? 
Mr. Hinkle has all kinds of voices. It's amazing how he threw his voice like that. <laughs> Nine tenths is correct. All right, let's do another one. Okay, how about um, everybody try this one? Actually, yeah, hold off here. So hang on to your scratch paper because I'm going to give you guys some problems to do. So let's look at this, uh, this example here. It says, how can you add fractions with unlike denominators? And so it says, Alex rode a scooter from his house to the park, later rode from the park to the baseball practice. How far did he ride? So it's just like the very first one I did. He, he did a half a mile and a third of a mile. And um, I already forgot what the answer is. But it uh, looks like they have it written down right there. It's five-sixths of a mile. And they're using um, number strips here. And, uh, and they're looking at the multiples of two. And, and then the multiples of three. And that's one way to find the common denominator. So if I did multiples of two, two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, okay? Then I could do multiples of three, three, six, nine, 12, 15. And I wanna find ideally the lowest multiple. And, and you can see what they did there, it's six. And so six, would be the common denominator. And when we did that problem earlier, I asked somebody when we added those up and um, we did use six. So let's, um, let's look at the convince me. It says, in the example above, would you get the same sum if you use 12 as the common denominator instead of six? Well, let's look at this for a moment. And what I wanna show you guys, one half, plus one third is that even if you use a different common denominator if your math is accurate you'll get the same answer so we use six and I'm just going to do it again really quick here three goes into six twice one times two is two two goes into six three times three times one is three and the answer is five six but now let's do it and use a common denominator of 12. Because 3 goes into 12 evenly and 2 goes into 12 evenly. Watch what happens here. 3 goes into 12 how many times? 4 times. 4 times 1 is? 4. 2 goes into 12 how many times? 6. 6. And 6 times 1 is? 6. Now I add the, the numerators, what's on top. Yeah. Six and four is 10, so 10, 12. So you're gonna say, wow, it's a different answer. Is it? No. They're equal, Ms. Pabase said it. Those are, it's just, I just renamed it. They're equal the same way. They're equal, they're okay. They're just different kind of numbers. They're just different numbers, it's just renamed, five, six, is the same as 10 twelfths. So even if you use a common denominator that's a little bit different, Mr. Ward, then if your math is correct, you'll still get the same answer. It just might be a fraction that you would actually have to reduce. Because 5 6 is reduced. Okay. So, um, and when I say reduce, I don't know if we've talked about that very much. If I was to write um, five tenths, five tenths reduced is the same as one half. And I would reduce it by saying to myself, well, five goes into five once, and five goes into 10 twice. And so I would just rename it as one half. So anyways, um, so there's number 12 done for you. Um, would you get the same? Yes. Um, um, yes, it is just renamed. Okay. All right. Uh, another example. 
I'm looking at the top of the very next page. It says five, uh, find five twelfths plus one quarter. So I'm going to do this one. Five twelfths, and we're adding one quarter. Okay, I'm going to pull a stick here. Miss Gunderson, what do you think would be a good common denominator? Remember, we're looking at 12 and 4. What's a number that both of those would go into evenly? Three. Now, you're th well, 3 wouldn't go into 4 evenly because there'd be one left over. You're looking for a number that 12 goes into evenly and 4 goes into evenly. Mr. Delgado, what do you think? Mr. Oldham, what do you think? What number would go into 12 and 4 evenly? You guys don't make it harder than it is. Miss Jennings? 24. 24 would work, but there's an even better number. Mr. Hollenbach? 12. 12. Look, does 12 go into 12 evenly? Yeah. Sure does. Why not use it? Sometimes, in fact, Early on like this, often, not always, but often, the common denominator that you'll use is one of the denominators you're already using to add them. So 12, all right? Now, watch what I do, okay? Uh, Miss Ramirez, 12 goes into 12 how many times? And then 1 times 5 is? Ms. Ramirez, 4 goes into 12 how many times? What's 4 plus 4? Yep. Okay. Could I add another 4? And what would that be? Yep. Good. So let me ask you again. How many times does 4 go into 12 evenly? Three, three times. And 3 times 1 is? Three. Now, Mr. Ward, what's the next thing I do? I think you have to add 5 and 3. 5 and what? 3. 5 and 3 is what? And there's your answer. Now that could be reduced. And I can't remember if the, in this lesson they're asking you to reduce things or not. When I say reduced, now I'm thinking of a number that will go into both of those evenly. 4 does. 4 goes into 8 twice. And 4 goes into 12 three times. So it reduces down to 2 thirds. Okay. All right. Um. So let's see here. I'm looking at the do you understand. I'm looking at the number one. And it says in the example at the top of page 278, if the park was one eighth of a mile from the baseball practice instead of one third, how far would Alex have ridden his scooter? So in this one, all, and I started it right there. You can see I wrote it down. It's one half plus one eighth. Whoops. Let's try that again. One half plus one eighth. All of you do that one right now. And I'm actually going to end this video here, even though it's a little bit early.